of the things about this study this morning is um, the intention is to make us understand how much our thought realm affects us. Now, is one of the aspects of our life that you know you, uh, if even in handling uh, that's as you're growing, one of the areas you will have to win warfare is in the area of your mind. Now, if you, one, I believe one of the reasons why God will want us instructions like this will come to us. Can we look at that place? Uh, that's Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20. Can, can we read it together? Attend unto my words, incline thy ears to my saying, let them not depart from thine eyes, keep them in the midst of thine heart. For what? For they are life to those who find them, and held to all their flesh. Now, if you look at this scripture and so many other related scriptures, you will discover that from the beginning, even from the beginning of, I want to call it what you call the um, credo, that's the, from the middle dimension, there is, there is provision for God doesn't want us to think anyhow. That, that, that's one of the things that Satan um, did to man. One of the evil that Satan did, that sin did, was to break the defense of our mind, our thoughts. You hear in Peter, I said, Therefore, gut up the loins of your mind. Now, gutting up the loins of your mind affects how you think. Gut up the loins of your mind and hope to the end. Meaning, if the loins of your mind are not gutted up and not strong, you will not be able to hope unto the end for the revelation. Your mind is required to effectively do that. I say, wherefore, gut up the loins of your mind. Now, last week, I talked about a whole lot, talked about the deception, the wiles of the enemy. Where he does his battle, even if he affects the natural, affects things around you, the major place is the mind. If you're going to, in your growth as a child of God, you're going to defeat him, it has to be in that realm of your mind. Why? Simply, I used to remember those days growing up as a believer, my mind, you know, because your mind has been scattered, your mind has been battered, a whole lot of things, amen, a whole lot of things that had come in into your mind, affected your mind. First of all, your upbringing, your background. Um, if you gave you, after, even after you gave your life to Christ, some of you, some of us, we are born into churches where they, that, as simple as this, somebody did not receive the Holy Ghost baptism because the church where he or she was raised is a church that does not believe in it. Where was the problem? Was it from God? Was it from his regenerated spirit? It was simply the mind. So with the, he, that, that person could not assess God's provision even though it is there. Could not assess God's provision because of the way the mind is wired. So in other words, what Satan simply did was that he ensured that things interfered with the arrangements of our mind. That interference is to stop us from assessing. Do you know that eternal life is a thought? Yes, sir. It's a thought. 
Oh, you say, Pastor, you know, I, I thought something would come on me, a power will land on me, and when it lands on me, all of a sudden, shh. No. It's, that is why when God was in communicating, he said, My ways, your ways are not my ways. Your thoughts are not my thoughts. As the heaven is higher than the earth, so are my ways and my thoughts. So, thoughts, they communicate to us. Thoughts of God. Thoughts of God are thoughts of eternal life. So, they will come through words. Words spoken to us upon words, upon words, upon words will frame a kind of, you call it mindset. We frame a kind of mindset. That kind of mindset eventually begins to affect my response to everything. Whenever I see any obstacle, there's a way I read it. I was giving an example of those of us. Some of us who are born in a church, maybe born again in a church, where, you know, uh, you know, doctrine of demons is prevalent. Amen. Doctrine of demons is prevalent. You know, your response to life will totally be different. No, you just be wondering why. Why is I? I, I counsel some believers. There, there's a particular one I'm dealing with right now. I carefully I am because talking with this person, I discovered that. He has been there for a long time. The, those thoughts are entrenched, weaved like baskets, you know. Those baskets are not just ordinary baskets, they are beams. So tight that if I want to enter, there's no way to enter. Sometimes when the call, person's call comes in, I don't want to pick it. My wife will say, pick this. I will say, look, sweetheart. I, I don't think I have energy. I used to wait and pray a little bit in tongues before I eventually counsel. Maybe later I'll call the person because I need energy. I don't know whether you understand me. Because what you're combating is stronghold thoughts that have been there for over a long time. And the person can, can, can stage you for the next one hour, two hours, you know, Telling you about things like that. And when is, I'll be looking for avenue to enter. But everywhere is blocked. That thought is tight. The only thing I do for such a person, I just pray. One of the things I pray is that God give me a road, you know, how to minister to this person. Eventually, you know, God will open up a door. Maybe the way he's thinking, something happened, something, something happened, and then he didn't get the desired results, and then I'll now come in through that and say, you see, this and this and this is not how. Simple instructions, simple, I'll call it simple instructions from God's word, is difficult to obey because of how the person is, the thought is wired. You read everything wrongly. I think that's where Satan did a bad job. That's where Satan did the bite. Mind. Mind. Your mind. Your mind. So growing up spiritually, one, one aspect of warfare you will fight and win is the warfare of thoughts. You must be skillful. Understand? You must be skillful. It's not every thought you take. You should be able to identify, listen to me, thoughts, because thoughts come this way. They fly like birds. Now, it's not, in fact, every thought I check the wavelength. Where is it coming from? Is it from my spirit? Can I say something to you? Everything that the Lord is saying will always be a witness.
the spirit beareth witness with your spirit. Can you give me that scripture? Let's, let's, let's see it. Now, can I, uh, let me not miss this thought. The Lord just, you know, uh, impressed it. Do you know when you're listening to message, to effectively listen to message, don't listen from here. Listen from here. Many of us have not developed that. That's why most of the time, you listen is as if you didn't listen. Listening from here. Here has the ear. Where you incline is not from outside. You incline from inside. Listening from here. I can assure you that, that the Lord has to tell me, he said, this place has to be trained effectively. If you must live a victorious Christian life, here has to, you know what I'm saying? Your, your belt, your, your spirits, your soul, the transaction between your spirit and your soul should get to the point where your soul can pick seamlessly from your spirit. Satan can't do much. In fact, he can't do anything about our spirit. But he knows if I catch your soul <laughs> and pump thoughts into your soul, whatever your spirit is saying, he won't even understand it. He won't, even if, even if your spirit, you know, sometimes, you know, your spirit can, you know, give you strong impressions, strong noddings, but your soul is living somewhere else. Your soul is open to another reality. Look at it. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Amen. Amen. Do you want me to say a little bit about this? Let's, 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 let's speak so that we're not... Give me amplified version of this. Give me amplified version of it. The spirit himself testifies and confirms together with our spirits. Are you seeing it? Testifies and confirms together with our spirit that we are believers. Now I'm driving, I'm, I'm trying to drive something through today. Your, your spirit, your spirit for instance, I was talking about listening to message. When you're listening to message and you're listening from inside, not only messages, even things. I used to tell people when I counsel, most of the time I counsel from here. I take fetch counsel. When I'm listening to you, I'm not just listening here. I'm listening also here. And when I listen, I can pick what you're not saying. I can pick what you're hiding sometimes. I can pick answer. Your, the answer I will give to you might not be directly what you're asking, it might be, the Lord will say, this is what is the problem. How do I get that? From here. I don't know whether you understand me. From, so, that, that training is something you must begin even from the, you know, that's, that's, that's the essence of the word of God. That's one of the reasons for the word of God. You, you're, you're, you have to be retrained on the inside. Basically, I'm talking about your soul. So they begin with you with the issue of, my son, attend unto my words. Give ears to my saying. Let them not depart from thy eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. In the midst of thine heart. Keep my words in the midst of thine heart. Now when you say the word in the midst of my heart is beyond just quoting of scriptures. It has to do with it. You begin by quoting those scriptures, speaking them to yourself. Speaking them to yourself. You need to speak those scriptures to yourself, but like I said, it's more than that. It has to do with, when you say, keep them in the mist. When they say something is in the mist, what does he mean? When something is in the mist, Huh? 
That is where the central seat of what brings forth judgment and response to life. That is what that place is saying. Uh, when he talked about he that loves, you know, he said that the, the power of life and death is, lies in the power of the tongue. He that loves it shall eat the fruit thereof. Now, that tongue is, is because anything that, you're gonna, that is going to scoop out or that is going to come from here is actually what is seated on the inside. So, the tongue is a function. This tongue is a function of the, what is here. So, if a word is in the midst of my heart, then word will come forth. It's very easy. In a situation, I'll give you an example. I'm driving. And something happens. You know, we have many responses. Something uh, accidentally happens. I'm not, maybe an, not an accident. Maybe something wants to. What, what's the first thing that comes out of your mouth? Jesus. Amen. That's your response. Now, I've seen brethren. Driving something. Mobile. I am you. I've seen brethren. Yekba. It's not difficult to know what you've been fellowshipping with. Situations reveal them. Can a couple and say you should be so soaked with the word that if they choke you pin, what comes out is word. If they scratch you, what should be the response should be word. But I want to say this. They don't come just by wasting time. You've got to make time for God's word, I tell you. You've got to make time for God's word. If, let me say this. Somebody asked me one time, he said, why is it that we are just comparing, you know, uh, things and then one of my daughters, he said, why is it that it looks like we, when we hear testimonies, especially from, you know, let me say, most of the churches in, you know, like faith churches in U.S., it's like they have more healings than us. They have more healings than us. There's a whole lot of things. Don't misunderstand me. I'm just talking about generally. They have some very mind-boggling testimonies, you know. And so he asked me, I said two things. One, they've had the healing move. Some of those people, we are protégés of the healing move. You meet guys like, uh, maybe much later, you're meeting third generation of Shambak. R.W. Shambak. We are meeting third generation of or a robot. Third generation. And they are handling the way, I mean, it's something that we are born into. They are born into it. That's why last week I was saying we have to also train our children how to use God's word. You're seeing third generation of them. I said, but we, 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 we really didn't give attendance to that the way they did. Let me share with you this. Those men, their commitment to word of faith, you know that, you've, you've read some of it. Their commitment to word of faith, Pastor Thompson, am I, am I lying? Their commitment to word of faith, the way they give themselves, I used to tell us about um, Smith Wigglesworth. He doesn't read newspaper. That is part of his own consecration. It wasn't the Lord who told him. It's his own consecration. He said he doesn't want bad news. That what those people sell is bad news. That he, wants, he doesn't want to be hearing bad news. Shambach went to visit him in his house. She, you know Shambach? Shambach is a powerful evangelist. And those Shambach was with newspaper. I wanted to enter into his house. 
You know, when he opened, he, he, he knocked and he came to open the door. You know, I saw Shambach and then observed that he was carrying his said, oh, you drop that thing over there. Drop that over there. Don't let that thing enter my house. So he wouldn't even let newspaper enter his house. Not to talk of into his heart. He carries Bible all the time in his pocket. He can't eat without reading. He would tell, they would ask him, why, why, sir, why, why do you always read your Bible? He said, I can't feed my body without feeding my spirit. I have to equally feed my spirit the way I feed my body. Now, but some of us, we feed our body. All our investment is in feeding our body. We eat well. We eat all kinds of things. You, some of us, when they see the, the bowl of Eba, you sit down and then you just mama the thing. You eat all kinds of things. When it comes to food, you don't, you don't, you don't, you, you are not sparing. And some of us, we feed our mind. We feed our mind with what we like. Some of us, it's movie. You're eating, you're watching movie. You're eating food, you're watching movie. You will behave like movie. Because that's what will come out. I don't know if you're understanding what I'm saying. It's a warfare we have to win. It's a warfare we have to win. The word of God has to sit in the midst of our hearts. Meaning that is going to be the seat of God. Judgment, meaning I will constantly put God's word. You find those men fasting. Recently, I began to fast too. I just find, found that impression in my spirit. Fast. I used to learn language with Duolingo. They told me, stop it. For now, you're fasting it. Now, I've gone far. And they said, stop it. And then in stopping it, I now discovered I, I was already getting attached. Because I just discovered that, sorry I'm mentioning this, it's my own, uh, uh, it doesn't have to be that way before you, uh, to you, but I'm just saying some of the things, commitments we have to make to word. We, some of us don't have enough commitment to God's word. Now, that's where the problem is. We don't have enough commitment. So, it's difficult for us to believe God's word. It's difficult for us to, to hold on to God's word. What you're not committed to won't bring you results. God is not a magician. That's why I said, it's my word. I sent my word and my word healed them. If God wants, it's his word. Attend unto my word. Give yes to my saying. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life. I want to say every word of God is life. Oh, you don't believe me. Do you know that what we are hearing, the word of eternal life, which we are hearing, I believe we've not given it the commensurate commitment. There's a commitment we will give to it. We will not be doing this teaching. We will not be doing this series. This series we are doing is just to help. Because we've not given it the due attention that is required. If we do that, we will not be doing this. Because it's written in the book of Hebrews, this we will do if God permits. Because it means that there's a level you will get to. There are things they will not, it's not, imagine it's like somebody who is in, he's doing his master's. And then you call him to come and solve some problems of primary school. You're wasting his time. What he wants to do is finish master's and get to doctorate. He has something he's shooting for. I don't know whether you understand me. Because he has, he has passed that level. 
Can I say something to you? Do you know that if the person does not give due diligence to what he or she is supposed to, the commitment to what he or she is supposed to be committed to, eventually he might find himself back to dealing with primary school, secondary school problem. So they, they, they give themselves, they, they, they just give themselves to God. So I was talking about Duolingo. I, I discovered something as I was, um, I was, you know, because, sorry, I just have to say it, you know. I travel to Poland every year and then sometimes they speak basically Polish language. Everything is Polish. And I've been learning it with Duolingo and I've made some very tremendous progress. You will, you will say, Pastor, you tried. But they knew the thing was. Now, there's nothing wrong with learning it. But you need to also listen to Holy Ghost. Watch when commitment to that thing is already going beyond what the time. Because I have a particular amount of lessons I'm supposed to cover in a day to remain where I am. Otherwise, I will drop in class. So every day I must, even when, and I must meet that requirement before 12 midnight. So if I've been busy through the, throughout the day, before that I'll be rushing, I want to quickly finish this before 12. Because once it's 12, the time is closed. I can't do anything. So I have to go back again the next day. So I've been doing that. And I've discovered that there's a way my heart has already started Attaching. There's a commitment I'm giving to this thing. It, it's not bad to do that. It's not bad to be committed. But there's a way I'm, I am already attached to it that I easily slip into it without knowing. And there's also a delight that I'm already getting out of it. Because you're supposed to delight yourself in the law of the Lord. Delight yourself in the law, there's a delight I'm already deriving from it. So the Holy Ghost said, fast it. My wife had already complained before that I give too much attention to this thing more than I give to her. I have to explain that, you know, I have to learn this so that I'll be able to communicate and all of that, you know. But, but when the Holy Ghost tells you, your wife tells you, your Holy Ghost tells you, then you'll be very, very stupid to continue in your ways. So they said, fast it. I, I fasted it. I thought that was all. I was listening to, you know, I've been following news, you know, Fox News to know what is going on. They say, fast it. How to fast it. Sometimes I also check the YouTube, you know, to listen to some prophets, you know, some of the things they are saying concerning, you know, what the happenings. They said, fast it. Yesterday, I mistakenly opened YouTube. Immediately, I just received a rebuke from what I heard was, when you fast, do you eat? In case you've forgotten. So, I knew what was that. Immediately, they said that I just knew. I just closed it. Now, the instruction to me was, Stay listening to messages. Stay. I've been doing that. It's not as if I've been doing that. But this is in nothing else. Give attention to the word. I don't know how long it's going to be. But I'm trusting God for grace to do that. Amen. Now, you, you, you have to give attendance. Because it will not be in the midst of your heart. You, you don't know how many things are contending for the mist of your heart. The mist of your heart is very, very crucial. It's the fulcrum. That's where the whole thing that stirs your life in different directions are. Mists of your heart. Let God's word be in the mist. Of your heart. However you're going to do. Whatever you're going to do to make it be in the mist. Do it. Means you have to give it all attention. Attend unto my word. 
That word attend means give first place, first priority, highest priority to my word. Give first. Let my word be the first place you consult. We don't do that. Even I don't do that. Maybe when you feel pain, they, is it God's word you consult first? You consult where? Google. And you Google out some problems. And that will further fortify wrong thoughts. I remember the time I was down a little bit. You know, some of us knew then, then especially the pastors. One of the things they had to tell me say, stop, 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 stop. Going to, not, this one wasn't even Google. It was, I just, you know, when you, maybe in YouTube, you, maybe you typed search for a particular thing. Then anything related to it, maybe to health, everything related to health will now be coming into your, and then they will just be popping up, and then you look at this one, 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 and then before you know, you spend one hour, two hours looking at those things. And as you're looking at it, the people are making money because each time you appear on their sites, they make money. They sell thoughts. They merchandise thoughts. And I was just checking, you know, check this, check this, check that. And then when you check this, you now see, okay, signs of this one, signs of, uh, you know, all kinds of things. Signs, these are the signs, these are the things you need to, once you, signs you must not take lightly. Before you know what the thing is, and at the end of the day, you just discover your moody. At the end of the day, you discover your weight. You discover that thoughts. I used to remember those days I would enter, you know, toilet and thoughts would just, you know, you just drop dead and die. You know, the way your heart beat is going, this one will happen to you. You just, you know. We fought. <laughs> God help me. <laughs> The Lord won for me. He gave me instructions. Some of them I struggled because I just, I, just, I just knew how I, you know, some of those little things, some of these things I'm teaching you right now, we have some of the things they have to point out. At that point, they say, stop looking at those things. Don't look at any sign. Look at the word. But you know, the problem is that when you pick the word, you're asking, okay, where exactly... <laughs> Do I look at right now in relation to what is happening to me? I what you look, you know, when you open Genesis, is it Genesis or is it Revelation? What in relation to what I'm having right now? No, what I want you to do is can you take your mind off what you're feeling and just pay attention to my word? What did he tell Job when he came? Did he tell Job, um, you know this thing that is happening to you? This thing that is happening to you is called uh, impopomitis. <laughs> and, you know, um, according to my word, there's a way we deal with it. No, he just declared to him ordinances. Ordinances of heaven. Ordinances of. And then when he finished, just can't get up yourself, brother, and go, go your way. Amen. And the guy rose up and recovered. Can you say God's word? God's word. Any word of God is life. Even when you're reading Leviticus. You know, that's one place we don't like reading. Even Nahum. Nahum, you know, Nahum. His life. Because what you're interacting with is spirit. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit. You're interacting with spirit streams. You're reading the story of Esther. Your body can get quickened. 
your body can just begin to respond differently. Because, but can you give that attend unto? I don't just want you to say, okay, in the morning I'll read my Bible before I go out. That's not attending unto my word. Attending unto my word is give my word the first priority. Make it the first place. Make it your first point of call in every situation. And then let it be the only thought you take. Let it be the only thought you allow. Don't allow any other thoughts. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And is of S is if or cask if or ate a cosy ten or cause and or it int or it is on it 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 or it 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 a coffee it a it 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 even as your body needs a natural food, so does your soul needs a spiritual food for life and for health. Eat and eat and eat and eat and eat and eat. Let my word stay in the midst of your heart. Let my word fill your lungs. Let it fill your stomach. Let it fill your heart. Let every fibers of your being be filled with my words, uh, until the reality of the world begins to find expression in your body. For you need to eat and eat and eat and eat and eat and eat. And eat. Because the adverse will stop at nothing. He will do everything. He will use every, every avenue to feed you. To feed you with fear. To feed you with unbelief. To feed you with doubt. Uh, to cause your feeling to be the source of your faith. But I say unto you, you need to win your battle. You need to fight your battle. And eat, and eat, and eat, and eat. Until you build fence around your mind. And your heart that set that cannot break through. I say eat, eat for defense. Eat for defense. For the time we are in you are, is a troublous time. Eat for your defense. For the time we are in you are, is a time of arrows being flown here and there. Eat for your defense, and you will find prosperity and health springing forth out of your life. See the Spirit of God. Amen. Finally, just to run through it, attend unto my word. What does attending mean? Very simple, simple term. What does attending mean? I'm not hearing you. What does it mean? Giving it first priority. Putting it first. Let it be the first. Then... Let them not depart from your what? Hmm? Huh? Let them not depart. I turn not to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. That word incline, like I said, is listening from here. Incline your ears to my saying. Let them not depart from your eyes. Now, you, if you watch, you discover that there's a progression here. What you value is what you give first attention. First, attend unto my word. Then, give ears to my sayings. My words, then, my sayings are the things that will begin to come to you. Now, I want to say this, sharing this with us. I've been able to I prayed, you know, health challenge. I prayed. I trusted God for, you know, healing. Can I tell you, can I tell you my secret? Nothing else. Nothing else. When I began to do this, God helped me somewhere. I was able to find one book by Andrew Womack. What was the name of that book again? That book by, I forgot to, Staying Full of God. Just very simple things he shared there, but which, you know, 
you can easily overlook. I had to begin to. And I just stayed and stayed and stayed and stayed and stayed. I began to, you know, if I discovered that some, if you're not careful, you get to a point where you give attention or attention is shared. Shared by many things that are calling for attention. And all, all your attention, David said, unite my heart. Unite my heart that I may fear you. Give me an undivided heart. That undivided heart is undivided attention. So that I can concentrate on your word. Now, when I went on, I began to do that. And the next thing is sayings. Instructions. Instructions. Fast this. Don't eat this. Don't take this. Do this. Began to flow from within. You know? And as I began to do them, I just discovered that I'm getting better. Part of the instruction, like I said, part of the instruction, you know, I'm not ashamed to say that, part of the instruction was pray for people. Because I was given that instruction, I wrote it down somewhere. I still remember I wrote it down. Maybe I didn't come with the book. I would have read it out for you. The date, the time, the Lord instructed me. I was praying. I was waiting on the Lord. And then instructed me, said, in your meetings, in your meetings, especially your outreaches, pray for people. People need help. Pray for them. Minister to them in the area of healing. I, I, I didn't quite take it serious. And after, I just did it a few times. I remember even the few times I did it. I remember the particular sister who I met in Joss. You know, and one of the outreach uh, in just and she she had a very peculiar kind of um, uh, illness that she and that she was not going to stay. I normally wait till the last day before I pray, and she was not going to be able to wait till the next last day of the meeting. You know, and I I I, I had to obey the Lord. I just prayed for her. Meeting was going, I called out because she was going to be going, traveling the next day. And we're standing outside. I just, I said, okay, repeat after me. You know, the way I, you know, simple, the way the Lord taught me. He said, lead, the way you lead people to receive Christ, lead her to receive healing like that. I did that. And the anointing came on her. She stood up, healed. But you know, that thing, you know, especially when you are, you have revelation to share, I have things I want to share, and then there's no time. You're trying to... I, I didn't do that. I neglected it, but the Lord had to begin to remind me again. Now, you're not going to just do it because you like it. You will do it because your own, your own recovery is as you do it. You will recover. So, what, what is that? What you call that? Those are the things you call sayings. Those are sayings, sayings that come with the word. Those are sayings that come with the word. But those sayings, you won't be able to receive instructions like that if you have not given God's word first priority. Because he will instruct you the way you didn't regard his word is the way you will not regard his sayings. You will neglect it. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are, what are they? Life to those who find them. So it's word that you've given attention. You've inclined your heart to, your ears to. You've continued to look. There has to be that staying ability with God's word. Staying with it. Stay with it. That is when it will sit in the midst of your heart. He said, they are life to those that find them. And what? Health. All their flesh. Healing to all their flesh. All, all your flesh. Meaning every aspect of your body. Every one of the days I told the Lord, I said, I want to drop this one of these days. And I'm going to drop it. I'm just going to begin to obey instruction. Recently, while I was, I was doing something, you know, and I wasn't with it, but I was, I was okay. I was seeing, you know, 
And then my wife said, I'll put on your glasses so that you can see well. I, said, well I've, I've been, I was actually doing this without it. But you know, I just went and fixed it because you are like almost gotten used to it. But I, I'm trusting God, I will drop this. I'm going to hold on to God's word. There is no place it is written that at a particular age you start wearing glasses. Hagen didn't wear anyone. I watched him. Amen. 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 They are held to all, all. My eye, my head, my, my chest, my stomach, my intestine, my leg, every aspect of me. God's word is held. 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 Held to all my flesh. You can't hear God's word and hear God's word and not, after a while, not start thinking. I used to say meditation is not really, you know, the way, you know, there's a mechanical one we try. But if you hear and hear and hear. How many of you have had, and I've had, I've had this experience several times. Maybe I listen to message and listen to message and I slept. And then in the, in the sleep, I'm listening to message. Or I was reading the Bible and reading the Bible and then I slept. And in the sleep, I was reading the Bible. Or I gave myself to God's word. I gave myself to God's word. And then in the morning, as I am waking, you know when you're waking up that, that, that early morning, instructions come. Sometimes I'm waking up and as my leg is touching the ground, instruction will just come. It comes fresh. An instruction for that day, instruction for a particular matter, instruction, they will come. It's because you've been giving, you've been, you've been giving attendance, attend unto my word. God's word is your life. Is my life. It's by his word you will live. May we live. May we live. One of the scriptures that came into my heart when pastor was teaching is, Be it unto me according to your word. Just sprang up from my spirit. Be it unto me according to your word. Not according to my thinking. Not according to what any other person is saying, not according to what the society is saying, not according to what, you know, wherever we are deducing our information from. No, be it unto me according to your word. My body can respond to it. My body should respond to it. We give praise to the Lord.